All right, this is the second video. Basically, we're gonna go through the electrical system. There's a giant air compressor in this room, so if that turns on, you'll have to excuse me. I'll, I might stop talking, but let's just go through this. Um, I use an Arduino, and I yes, I use the full board. I've got a lot of questions as to why I use the full board. I I really don't have a good reason. I, it just seemed like the uh, there it goes. Um, just seemed like the easiest thing to do. Um, and I, in just in case I wanted to use it for another project in the future that I could just yank it out and be good to go, I do believe I own the world's first Nerf gun with a USB port. Uh, I could be wrong, but that's highly doubtful. So the Arduino is the obviously the CPU for this blaster, and sitting behind it here is a 5 volt power supply, so that I could pretty much put any battery packs I wanted. Uh, and I would still be able to run the electronics without having to modify anything. You could just use the regular 5 volt regulator from Radio Shack and set that up, but I had this laying around so I figured I might as well use it. Nestled over here is the Easy Driver stepper motor driver from, uh, I got it from SparkFun. Uh, the only limitation to it is that it can only put out 750 milliamps, which is not that much current, um, which requires us to make a boost converter. Now, I had made attempt number one and attempt number two, and both of them have issues. Essentially, I hate perf board because I always run into problems and, and the, the, the bugging is intense, but once I get that put in, I can close the blaster up. There's a bird's nest of wires. I, I'm not doing the neatest job. I'm kind of rushing because I have to have this done by next week. But everything, you know, with headers, I have distribution blocks, and it all goes with pull down resistors. There are three micro switches. There's one here, which is for the uh, trigger mechanism. You could use a small uh, Radio Shack micro switch. I, I have two of them over here, and I usually try to put it back here. Just seems like the easiest location, but uh, also I had this, and I, I liked how much resistance it, it provided and uh, the positive engagement. And then, don't know how well this is going to show up on the video, but there are two more micro switches. One here, and there's one here. It's basically a closed loop system. There's another video I'm going to post where we tested this open loop, and uh, it misfired a few times because the stepper motor didn't know how far forward it was, essentially. So by adding the micro switches, we're, we're giving it the boundary so we know when we launch the darts. It's essentially the only reason they're there, just so I don't have to use dumb logic, and we know every time. Um, as far as other switches are concerned, I have the power switch nestled in the back here, and I had a secondary switch to, to enable or disable the stepper motor controller, but for whatever reason, I don't know whether it's a faulty switch or just a shitty switch, it doesn't pass much current. So I had to end up jumping it with this jumper here, and I'm probably just going to just remove the entire thing and get rid of it. We also back here have a rotary switch. Which, let me flip this over. Ugh. Back here to select the firing rate. So you know it defaults to semi-automatic, and then you have three shot, three round burst, five round burst, and uh, fully automatic. So eventually I'll be able to get that put in. It's all wired up back here with pull down resistors. The only thing I don't have set up right now is, are the motors. I need to make a just a MOSFET, a um, little MOSFET circuit just to kick those on when I want them to. So that's not wired up. Uh, I can't demonstrate the blaster in its entirety, but I will show the loading mechanism in the next video.